You know, over the years, Donald Trump has appeared at several UFC fights. And when you really dig in and start looking at a lot of things UFC fighters have said and done over the years, it's really not surprising that Donald Trump would take his platform to theirs because the two kind of go hand in hand. There have been a whole lot of UFC fighters over the years who have spread conspiracy theories from their platforms, used their platforms to spread COVID-19 conspiracies and QAnon conspiracies, uh, mass shooting denials. They've promoted homophobia, transphobia, and racism from their platform. And anytime someone calls them out for it, Dana White, the owner of the UFC, always seems to come to their defense and say that he doesn't put his fighters on leashes. They're free to say whatever they want to. Take a look at this clip. Like, you obviously give a long leash to your fighters about, you know, what they can say when they are up there with a the UFC microphone and you are getting into territory of homophobia, transphobia. Like, is there... I don't give anybody a leash. Well, I'm saying you... A leash? I'm st like free speech. Can I control when control what people say, kind of tell people what to believe, kind of tell people, I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no leashes on any of them. What is your question? I was asking that question. I'll move on though. Yeah, uh, probably a good idea. You just, that's ridiculous to say I give somebody a leash. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want, and they can believe whatever they want. Now, I'm not here to call Dana White a racist, but anytime I have ever saw him in these type of moments, he always defends the person's right to say it. But I personally have never heard him. If he said it, I've never heard him. I've never heard him really follow it up with, but I denounce that. I don't believe in that bullshit. He always goes back to, they have a right to say it. They're not on a leash. Next question. If I was in his shoes, I would say, I don't agree with anything they said and I don't condone or embrace it in any way. That's just me. I would always make sure that I followed it up with that, but he always seems to take great offense and seems to just want to rush on to the next question. And he says that the UFC is a tough game. It's a tough sport and the world is full of snowflakes and people's gonna speak their minds and everybody needs to get used to it. Take a look at this. Uh, when you found out about, uh, you know, the face-off yesterday, the, the terrorist comment. And, yep. Um, I don't know if, if you thought about doing anything, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, I know you say all the time, is, hey, it's a fight business, people say mean things. Uh, but, you know, that one seemed uh, maybe a little far. You, you know what my answer <laughs> is to that. Um, are we going to do anything? It got done tonight. You know what I mean? That's the beautiful thing about this sport. I, I, I say it all the time. <clears throat> this is not a nice sport. This is a very rough sport. We say a lot of mean things to each other, a lot of, you know, uh, and, and, and justice gets served at the end of the day. I mean, listen, when, when you have a situation like that, the best way to solve the problem is you fight, and you fight legally, and uh, you get paid to do it, and that's what happened tonight. Do you ever feel that there is a line, though, that you got to worry about, like, hey, maybe that was a little too far? No. Nope. Not, not in this business, I don't. Yeah. There's been, if, you, if you look, you can add that to the pile of some pretty nasty things that have been said in this, in this sport. And not just this sport, boxing, I'm sure Muay Thai, kickboxing, you know, you, you name it. Mean things are said. In this insanely politically correct world we're living in, this is one place that is not. You know what? It is a cruel world out there, and people are going to say whatever they want to say. And they do have a First Amendment right to say whatever they want to say. People are going to choose the hill they're willing to die on on their platform. Personally, this is the hill I'm willing to die on. I'm going to be over here saying the things I want to say. But the difference is I'm never going to turn over my platform to someone to spread racism and homophobia and transphobia, xenophobia. I'm not going to turn over my platform to conspiracy theorists to spread misinformation. I'm not going to have doctors who have been fired to come on here and try to give people medical advice and spread that stuff around. I'm never gonna turn my platform over to that and I do not wanna be aligned with that in any way. And that's what I would like to hear someone like Dana White say instead of saying, well, they have every right to say it. You're right, they do, they have every right to say it. But they're saying it under your umbrella and people are watching it and that's the type of people that are being drawn to your product. And now a president is bringing that same kind of rhetoric there to try to connect with the people and it's like, hey, I'm gonna go over here to this crowd of people who accepts racism, who accepts homophobia, who won't call it out, they'll just call it free speech and, and move on. Next question, don't bug me with that again. 
Trump knows that, so now he can bring that over there. So what kind of people do you think is sitting there cheering for him and the fighters who say all of these things? There is this alpha male group of people out there who wants their life to be the only one that matters, and they don't want anyone else to be able to live in peace and harmony amongst them. They're the very ones that loves to yell, don't tread on me, while they sit back and support politicians like Donald Trump, who treads all over anyone who doesn't look like them, speak like them, believe in the same God, or love the same way they do. And we see this crowd of people getting catered to all the time. And this next clip I wanna show you, uh, Jake Powell, who his brother Logan, by the way, had uh, Trump on his podcast recently. Uh, Jake Powell is talking about um, Trump and Biden, and he's saying how that he wants to invite Trump to his fight and Biden to his fight because he wants them to talk to the people. Get a load of this. Your brother was just with Trump. Uh, let's watch the clip. You explain what was going on here. And where are we? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, no, I, I think my brother's having Trump on his podcast. And I think that's what's important to young voters is the president showing up, speaking their mind, saying how they're going to help. And my brother's invited Biden onto his podcast, the last I've heard. And, you know, let's see what happens. Um, I've invited Biden to my fight. I want both Donald Trump Jr. and Biden to come to my fight. But who knows which president is actually going to show up, talk to the people, get into the weeds and meet the young voters where they're at and give them give them that representation and give them that voice and someone who's going to fight for us. So my question is, let's say Donald Trump and Joe Biden both shows up in front of that audience to talk about what's going on. And let's say Donald Trump comes out and starts spewing his racism and his homophobia and starts talking about mass deporting people and start spreading a bunch of election conspiracies, um, I'm pretty sure that crowd's gonna cheer him on. I'm pretty sure that crowd's gonna be all about him. Imagine on the other hand, if Joe Biden came from the opposite direction, do you think they're gonna listen and be reasonable and hear him out? Or do you think they would just boo him out of the room? Or do you think they would do what Jake Paul does in this next clip, which is what they're really good at, just poking fun at President Biden? Take a look. If Biden put the gloves on and Trump put the gloves on, what do you think would happen? I mean, Trump wouldn't even have to punch and Biden would just fall over from the wind. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. And, and, and Trump, if you're watching this, this is an invite. I know you used to promote Tyson, so I'd love to have you at the fight. Vivek came to my other fight. And of course, the Silver Fox, Baron Trump. So Donnie, pull up. We got tickets for you. Tickets. Now, I do want to make one thing perfectly clear. I'm not here to pick on the UFC, and I'm not saying that these things only happen in the UFC. I realize that people will use their platforms for whatever they want to say, and yeah, they have a First Amendment right to do so. People in all walks of sports and all walks of entertainment have spread the same type of conspiracy theories and said the same type of racist and homophobic things. So I'm not saying that it only happens in the UFC. I'm just saying that when it does happen in the UFC, Dana White seems to get really annoyed when you point it out and he wants to change the question and he wants to use the free speech argument and move on. And I personally could never do that. I could never allow people to be on a platform that I owned and allow them to say those type of things and allow them to do that kind of trash talking because what I notice is that the kind of trash talking that these fighters are doing and the type of conspiracies they're spreading are the same exact type of trash talking and the same exact type of conspiracy theories that Donald Trump himself spreads. So I can so see why that he would feel welcome at that event. I can so see why that he would feel comfortable aligning himself with that. Um, if you'll notice, folks, wherever racism and bigotry and hatred and cruelty go, Donald Trump is never far behind.